All right, welcome everyone. We'll go ahead and get started. Uh, we're joined by the head men's soccer coach, Dan Stratford. Coach, if you want to start us off with an opening statement, just previewing uh, the upcoming week, then we'll open it up to questions. Yeah, obviously, uh, first and foremost, delighted with Friday's performance and getting that win at Charlotte. Um, I feel like it was just what the guys needed after such a long break. And uh, yeah, I think we'd all kind of forgotten what that feeling was was like to, to go and play a tough tough road game and, and, and get a really good win uh, and that feeling in the in the locker room afterwards and uh, definitely made for a, an easier ride home for sure. So that gives us a lot of confidence, um, but also gave us a really good platform in terms of what we need to build on and continue to improve uh, as we enter conference play here with, with NIU and, and obviously looking forward to opening up at, at Dick Delesk as well. All right, we'll go ahead and open it up to questions. Just a reminder to use the raised hand feature when you're ready. Joe Bricado, go ahead. Dan, as you're going into the conference season and you now have a double round robin, you'll see every team twice, you'll see everybody uh, both home and away. Is that a pretty fair way to determine uh, a league champion? Yeah, I believe so. I believe so. I think um, something that I'm personally familiar with because we had a very similar format at the University of Charleston when we played in the MEC, that we would play home and away against each team. Um, obviously, with a, a slightly smaller uh, pool of teams within the conference, um, again, uh, only that only playing what would be five games would uh, perhaps not be a fair reflection um, of, of who the strongest team is. So I think now that we have these 10 conference games and, you know, you, you tend to believe that that's going to lead you to uh, the best team uh, rising to the top at the end of it. So, um, yeah, looking forward to the challenge and, and looking forward to what that will bring us in terms of, uh, potentially seeing a team and then uh, in some cases not even 10 days later seeing them again um, you know that's going to be very interesting in terms of how we scout and prepare for sure. Zach Anderson. Hi coach um, how has your team's first win in dominant fashion helped team chemistry moving forward into your uh, beginning of conference play? It was huge it was huge I think um, you know one of the things I alluded to before the game was we're finally going to get some questions answered on on this team um, in terms of their character, in terms of how how far we've come with feeling like, um, you know, the, the culture is where we want it to be. Um, and they answered some of those questions. Um, so it's a great first step. It's, uh, you know, in the context of what Charlotte have achieved and uh, I think still will continue to achieve. I think that's a very good team that we've played and beat on, on Friday. Um, you know, I don't want that to um, be understated for the guys, but we're obviously trying to find that balance of, you know, not allowing that to just be now that the highlight and, and the marquee win of, of the spring season. It's, it's just one game, um, but it should definitely give us some confidence. Um, and, and to be honest, um, it perhaps wasn't the, the dominant performance in terms of possession and um, exactly how we would have would have drawn it up, if you like. And I almost prefer that, that... Uh, there was, you know, a lot of variables to the game and, and some adversities that we had to face that, that weren't part of the plan, if you like. Um, and the fact that the players got through that part of the test, most importantly, um, and showed a really resilient performance, um, that versatility is incredibly important for this team. And, and like I said, they, they passed that test with flying colours. Now the question becomes, can we do it again? Um, can we do that consistently? Uh, and I think if if they can answer that question positively, then um, you know it's a really, we'll have a really bright season and a really bright spring ahead of us. Joe Bricado, go ahead. Dan, you mentioned not having a, a ton of scoring opportunities, but you did finish on a bunch of them in the first half. How impressed were you with the guys with the way that the guys were able to take advantage of the opportunities in the first half? Yeah, I think the the, the way that the chances. Um, were created and revealed themselves um, was as expected uh, in terms of how we had prepared for, for Charlotte and, and scouted them in terms of ways that we thought that we could exploit them. Um, you know, that was reflected in the three goals that we scored. Uh, but at the same time, you know, the way that, that Charlotte tried to press and, and the way that they defended with an incredible amount of intensity and, 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 and rushing numbers forward, yeah, inevitably that's going to make it difficult for us to really establish our possession game. So, um, yes, while we didn't 
if you like, create a great deal of chances. The quality of chances that we created were, um, yeah, fantastic. So I think watching the game back and analysing it in terms of, um, you know, our, our performance, we executed incredibly well in those moments. And, and again, when you can put um, high percentage opportunities in front of players, um, that's obviously going to increase the likelihood that, that we can then convert them. So, yeah, they may have had more shots, but they may have been 25 yards out, 30 yards out. Um, you know, the types of types of chances that we were creating inside the penalty area, um, one on one with the keeper um, from close distances. Those are the, the quality of chances that we're looking to. So um, sometimes that statistic can can maybe skew the perception of, of, of the actual the game and, and the reality of what occurred during the game. Joe, go ahead. How fluid is your starting eleven? Uh, I mean, do you do you want to get to a point where you're putting the same eleven out there every week or every game, or are you okay if there's a little bit of uh, fluidity in it? I'm absolutely fine if there's some fluidity. We we want to get to a point, quite honestly, where there's incredible um, depth and, and and great choice of for for selection, and we have the versatility to change. Um, you know, with with the numbers that we're working with in training right now, with a couple of injuries that we're really optimistic we're going to get back very very soon, um, we'll have uh, more more ability to to do that. Um, but yeah, I mean, as I've mentioned before, that the squad is light right now, and was always going to be a little bit lighter numerically for this spring semester. Um, the, the great news is we've we've gone to a place like Charlotte with light numbers, with a depleted squad in terms of, um, you know, we know internally what wasn't available, as do our players, that, that will help this team this spring. Um, but the fact that we've been able to do that and come out with that result, knowing that we don't have anyone graduating, we already have, you know, six players joining the squad that are going to help this squad come the fall of 21, um, you know, makes the potential of this team very, very exciting, not just for this semester, but, but in, in the years to come as well. Joe, you can continue. Okay. And last one for me, Dan. Let me ask you about a couple of local local guys. Ike, Sw Ike Swiger gets in the starting lineup for you, and then Borneo uh, gives, gives you an assist. What did you see from those guys? Yeah, another solid performance. Two two weeks in a row for for the two of them. Mike scored a fantastic goal at OD, ODU, and that was um, assisted by Elijah. And then Elijah coming up again with a great ball for Tony's uh, goal for the third um, on, on Friday against Charlotte. So, uh, you know, they both added – um, what we expected. I've known those guys for a long time. There's, there's technical quality. There's great athleticism. We continue to work hard with both of them to help them improve um, in terms of just their understanding of what we're doing tactically, um, which may be different to, to, to what they've either had in their previous collegiate experience at, at Kentucky and Bowling Green or, or in their um, you know, youth careers coming up. So um, they're two players with fantastic potential um, and, and need that time and need that investment of time uh, and we're working with them really diligently, quite honestly, to to continue to help them improve what the what the, their understanding of our system of play is. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it, it's been great to have two two local guys, um, and then that's you know doing a disservice to to Sam Morgan and, and Jojo Biafora that have both contributed off the bench for us as well. So to have four kids from West Virginia and uh, that know what it means to to represent the university and are very proud. We want them to be to be leaders within this group and, and reinforce that message to international players, out of state players, and, and really, yeah, fully value what it means to to represent this university. Zach, go ahead. Um, hi. So you, I know you have a great group of players, and you've mentioned that um, talking to Joe here. Um, but in what specific ways has your veteran goalkeeper Stephen Tekeski helped out on the team, helped them succeed? Yes, yeah, Stephen had another solid performance on, on Saturday as well. Um, again, I, I see it more as, as a unit in, in the defensive performance in particular on, on Friday. I thought we were fantastic defensively. Um, you know, Stephen did his job uh, and we feel really, really comfortable with him in goal and, and, and knowing that he's going he's gonna to come up on top when, when we need him to and, and, and obviously uh, manage the game very, very well. But um, yeah, again, he may get a lot of the accolades in terms of the clean sheet and, and that's that statistic. But, um, you know, I would be doing a disservice to the defenders in front of him. And quite honestly, the, the midfield three um, that were in front of them uh, when it came to the Charlotte game specifically and just how defensively resolute we were and resilient we were to, um, you know, a, a lot of pressure 
uh, that, that that Charlotte put on us. I had said before the game this time last week, I expected Charlotte to be the fitter team. They were, um, and, and we still managed it and, and, and fought our way through the whole game. And, and like I said, the, the whole collective effort defensively was fantastic. And that allows, um, quite honestly, Stephen to have less to do uh, for us to require less from him. Uh, and if that means he gets the clean sheet stat at the end of it, then then more power to him. Uh, I have no issue with that, and I'm sure I'm sure he doesn't either.